Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Indai RN, your nurse in charge. And on this video, we are going to talk about the community health nursing part one, wherein we are going to talk about the introduction of community health nursing. First, before we're going to start, please don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe on this channel, especially if you are new. So, let's start after the intro. <laughs> In this video, we are going to talk about the community first. And as mentioned, community is a group of people living together in a particular area or locality. Take note of the word group of people, wherein they are interacting with common interests from the basis for sense of unity and belongingness. Maybe this could be the language, religion, and a particular culture. You need to take note also that they are a group of people with one language or religion. The next one is we need to define the community health. And community health refers to the health status of the members of the community and the problem affecting their health. This could be the totality of health care provided by the community. And what do we mean by health status? Here, we need to take note if they are healthy or not in that certain community. So if we say community health, this refers to the overall status of a certain group of people. They could be healthy or not healthy, okay? And this COVID season, community health is vital. It plays a vital role in the prevention of COVID-19. We need to take note also that the meaning of community health, wherein this is a model of healthcare that is fundamentally reactive. And it is a profession that works to improve many individuals' health by doing what they can do to reduce social and environmental determinants. Actually, community health nursing is vital this time in the prevention of infection within that community. There are a lot of importance in this job to be a community nurse. They will work in the the prevention, treatment, and screening of a disease. They also work in advocacy, policy development, and planning because a community nurse can give health education wherein they can be an advocate. So for example, a community health nurse is an advocate of prevention of COVID-19. So a community nurse can do some education to the community. They advance principles of social justice specifically in order to improve the health outcomes of all. So the response responsibility of a community health nurse is heavy. If you can see, the community health nurse these days are the one leading the community, especially in the prevention of infected related diseases. And one right now that is common is the COVID-19. How does this COVID-19 will be prevented in a certain community? So the community health nurse will butt in. He or she will going to do some intervention, will going to do some policy development in order for her to improve the knowledge of the people within that certain community. There are a lot of theories already in nursing that we can use especially in our community health nursing practice. One of these is the Nightingale's theory of environment, wherein Florence Nightingale advocated for the preventive care and maintain the cleanliness of the environment. This could be proper hand washing and maintain the cleanliness of the overall environment of a patient or a client. And the role of this theory right now is the prevention of infected related diseases. So it's not only COVID-19 that can be prevented by hand washing. Another one is typhoid fever that could be also be prevented. And if your environment is clean, you can prevent some diseases like leptospirosis and others. So always remember, in the Nightingale's theory of environment, we are promoting the cleanliness of the environment of the patient, of the family, and the community. The next one is the health belief model, wherein it assumes a person's primary motivation for taking a positive action so that they can avoid getting a disease. In this model, it also says that the belief of that individual will be frightened by the idea of disease or illness and the effect they can cause and be prompted to seek out preventive care services based on the benefit it provides. So if you can see here in the health belief model, the positive action here will 
will be modifying variables. Perception to a disease. Perception of benefits of taking action. So for example, right now, here in the health belief model, a person is having high glucose. And this high glucose will be the primary motivation for taking this patient to have a positive action. And we say here in the positive action, we have three modifying variables. So the patient could modify lifestyle. He or she may reduce the consumption of sugar in his or her lifestyle. Also, changing of lifestyle through doing exercises. These are the modifying variables. Changing of lifestyle. The way that patient eats and the way that patient will do his or her exercises. Another primary motivation in taking action is the perception of disease. The patient needs to think of the susceptibility of the disease. Now, for example, let's take that high sugar level as an example again. If that patient is thinking that he or she will always have a high sugar level, he will think that he will be susceptible in having a diabetes mellitus. So once he will think that he will be having a diabetes mellitus, he will also have a perception of benefits of taking action. Now, I need to modify my life lifestyle, I need to modify those things that I usually do in order for me to prevent this kind of disease health belief model, it is based on the belief that that individual will be frightened by the idea of disease or illness and the effect they cause can be prompted to seek out preventive care services based on the benefits it provides. So take note that here in health belief model, it is important in the prevention of having disease. Once the patient is already having a primary motivation, he or she needs to take a positive action based on his perception in order for him to avoid getting illnesses. So this is one of the examples of the health belief model. So let's discuss further the health belief model. Person A will say, I'm safe, I only have clean partners. So he is perceiving in getting a sexually transmitted disease and now he is preventing it because he is only having clean partners. Meanwhile, here in the perceived severity, this female here will see or will think that having an STD might really affect her, her life. Her life. So he needs also to have clean partners. Furthermore, here are some of the variables in the health belief model. Perceived susceptibility, perceived severity, perceived benefits, cue to actions, and self-efficacy. So, for example, the patient already perceived the susceptibility in having diseases. He will also perceive the severity of that diseases that may affect his or her life. Once he will going to perceive the severity of it, he will also see the benefit of doing some action okay and he will apply it to herself okay got it so perceived susceptibility perceived severity perceived benefits cue of actions and self-efficacy if you can see here in health belief model it is actually the belief of patient in the prevention of diseases that is why we always say the perception because perception is the belief what's the patient think of a certain illness these are the perceptions of a patient in order for him or her to prevent that certain disease to further discuss community health nursing, let's base it on community-oriented nursing and community-based nursing. These two have different dimension. We always see community health nurses in our place, right? We often see them in our community health centers. We also see them talking with microphones and with the crowd. And they sometimes go in our houses and visit us. But what is really the differences of this community-oriented nursing and community-based nursing? Here in the community-oriented nursing, these nurses are not following on illnesses because they are focusing on a group of people that is promoting the health. So they usually do health education. So if you can see those nurses who are having microphones and talking with the community, with a lot of audiences, they are our community-oriented nursing. Usually, these are the public health nurses advocating importance of hand washing. They are with the crowd they are promoting in a group of people and they are not usually follow on illnesses because they are focusing more on the health prevention and health promotion okay 
Meanwhile, here in the community-based nursing, they follow illnesses. And it is whether acute or chronic, they will follow illnesses. And they are always focusing on individuals and families. You can see them doing individual follow-up. You might see them checking the blood pressure or the blood sugar or they can be the one doing the wound care of your pressure ulcered family member, okay? Take note that in community-based nursing, they are the one doing individual care to the clients. They are checking one by one. They are doing the follow-up every now and then to the people who are affected with certain illness, okay? So, let's take for an example of tuberculosis. In the community-oriented nursing, the thing that is being done here is the health prevention and promotion. So, here in the tuberculosis disease, for example, the public health nurse will do her talk. What are those preventive treatments or measures for this pulmonary tuberculosis? Okay, this could be the health prevention through proper sneezing, through proper hand washing, and through maintaining healthy or clean environment. Okay, so that is the role of the public nurse in prevention of pulmonary tuberculosis. Meanwhile, here in community-based nursing, the nurse will going to have a focus on that individual who is actually suffering from tuberculosis. By how? By monitoring the medication of this individual. Remember the RIPES? Remember the medication of pulmonary tuberculosis? These nurses or the community health nurses will follow up on this individual through the medication, isolation, and also the proper treatment that is being prescribed by the physician, okay? Another community-based nurses are the group of nurses who are in the school. They could be doing allergy monitoring to the children, like that. Here in community health nursing, we also need to discuss the four important ethical principles. These are respect for autonomy, wherein the nurse needs to give a self-determination to her clients. So for example, a patient who is suffering from cancer might not agree in undergoing chemotherapy. So the nurse needs to respect the decision and allow the autonomy of the patient. Another one is non-maleficence, wherein the nurse shouldn't do any harm to her clients. The third one is beneficence, wherein the nurse needs to do what is best for her clients or what is best for her community, maximizing the benefits within the community. So he needs to promote what is beneficial for the benefits of all. The last one is the distributed justice, wherein there should be a fair allocation of resources within the community. Here in the distributed justice, we are actually talking to the overall needs of the community. Distributed justice could be giving a fair allocation of resources, resources and needs of the community. They should allocate the resources that is available within the community and it should be fair for all. So I hope you guys gain knowledge in this topic and if you do so, please don't forget to subscribe on my channel and share this video to your team. If you guys need some help again in nursing topics or if you have some difficulties in nursing, you can comment your problem down below and maybe I can help you. Please check the other videos that I have on this channel. They might help you. So thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share this video to your friends. See you on my next video. Bye!